because I'm going to combine a two series into one, and that is the Matthew 24 series with the Esther calendar series, I am going to go straight to the point. This will be a compact but very important series. So I'm going to ask you to watch all of the episodes. I will post one as I finish and then work on the next, as opposed to having all of them completed and then posting them. So always look out for the next episode and try to take notes, but it is very critical and important that you study this material so that we can share with others who are in tremendous need of hearing the good news and the importance of the urgency of the times that we're in. As always, I do this out of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and this is all that matters right now. I'm not here to speak on my own merit, to get more likes or views or consensus. I'm just here speaking the truth and what exactly I hear from the Lord and what I hear from the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Please go back to my testimony to understand that I have no need to be here on my own. And most importantly, that there is no possible way that I can figure these things out on my own. I want to thank everybody for the support and the encouragement. But in truth, this is the Holy Spirit's work, and it is the Lord's wisdom that I get to see dimly, very dimly, just glimpses of it. This is not my doing. This is not my smarts or intelligence. This is just a warning for everybody that the Lord is very, very near. So the series will start with a message which I received on March 8th, 23. And this is exactly in the book where I'm writing messages or logging messages, 26 and a half pages backwards to the beginning of the book and 24 and a half pages forward to the end of the book. This is about approximately 117 days from the first message on this book on 11 11 22. The message I received at 10 27 p.m. And the message says, you are forgiven, son. Write that I come quickly. At lightning speed, not according to man. For the foolishness of their heart does not let them comprehend what matters. S in parenthesis. Write, son, that the time comes when the sun will be darkened and the moon like sack cloth it is my blood which washes not of works repent now right son for time is no more i come quickly repent now son i say repent now i am at the door you have done well son now go it is late i love you your father lord jesus yeshua abba amen so the first thing that we see here is that we say the lord says at lightning speed okay and this takes me immediately to matthew 24 verse 27 for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. And then immediately after, we talked about here that the time comes when the sun will be darkened and the moon like sackcloth. And so this takes us also to Matthew 24. That's in verse 29. And it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the star shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken so then of course we have the repent and the i come quickly and the i am at the door those are obvious references to revelation so again we are pointed out by the lord to a specific time now notice that the message came at 10 27 and we just said that the at lightning speed is verse 27. Now, we do know by now the 10 years of labor and sorrow, 22 to 32. So this is something here telling us to look at the 10 years and also verse 27, which also points to the year 2027. 
So if we look at Matthew verses 10 and 27, verse 10 is, the Lord says, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. This definitely points to what we're going through right now. And 27, as with the coming of the Son of Man, as lightning comes, it definitely points out to the rapture. And so it looks like this is an indication of a period of time that will lead us quickly, as we can see, from where we're at to the rapture as we're moving through the 10 years of labor and sorrow. So based on, on this evaluation, the Lord led me to start working out and studying Matthew 24. And in Matthew 24, he did lead me to verse 36, which we'll analyze in a minute. And then from there, he made a connection to the book of Esther. And so this entire calendar, I'm going to ask you to pay attention, take notes, because we're going to link two massive pieces that are going to start giving us an indication of a clear map through the tribulation and, of course, the rapture. In order to understand these next two calendars, I really need everybody to go back to the first calendar and the series that I posted. I'm going to do a short recap here. And for those of you who have been in the Zoom group, We've been going through this calendar it's really important that you understand the foundation of this calendar so that the next two calendars the matthew 24 and the esther will begin to make sense so for anybody who wants i'll figure out a way to have a link so that you can start downloading these calendars as you can see there is a page one right here and there's going to be a page two which is the matthew 24 calendar and there's going to be a page three which is the esther calendar so you're going to look at the three calendars together as a unit. So as a short recap of calendar one, we wanted to understand that there are several calendars running simultaneously. This is completely important because this idea of context. There's a tendency to associate the rapture and then the tribulation seven years and we're done. That's not the case. The case is the Lord is as organized a large amount of different calendars happening for both the Jews and the Gentile culminating all around this time. So in the first calendar page, you're going to understand that we have a total span that goes from 2020 all the way to 2033. Now, 2020 will be associated with the so-called flood warning calendar. The flood happening in 2027, we have the seven years warning to the flood which will be in 2027 this is the year 6000 why because in revelation 20 verses 2 to 7 we are looking at six times the word 1000 years leading us to understand that's the year 2027 as the year 6000 this is further confirmed as you've watched in the last video by the fact that in Genesis 7, 6, we're told that Noah is 600 when he goes into the ark. And then we confirm that Noah Arari is going to be 51 in the year 2027. So 50 plus one year, which is 12 months, is 50 times 12, which equals 600. Further confirming that the year 2027 is the year 6000 so because we have seven days warning for not for noah we have seven years warning for us starting in the year 2020 does something go off as an alarm in 2020 absolutely this confirms the first leg of the calendar the second leg is the beast system and that started in 21 with the implementation of the beast jabs which will lead to the mark and the full control of the beast in 2026 how do we know this we know from matthew 16 series as you can see runs from 23 all the way to 28 and 26 is the verse that leads us to know that this is the Antichrist because who can conquer the entire world and lose his soul? There's only one man that can do that, and that's the Antichrist. The next most important piece is the 10 years of labor and sorrow. Okay, These go from 22 all the way to 32. How do we know this? 
we know from Psalm 90. And Psalm 90 tells us a 70 to 80 year, but we have to add to 1948 when all started, Leviticus 19.23, as well as Second Chronicle 2.2, etc., which lead us to know that there are a four year or a three plus one year. Please go to that video that we're explaining in full detail the three plus one years. They're added to 1948, taking us to 1952. At that point, we count the 70 years to 2022. And from there, there's 10 years of labor and sorrow, not three or four or five years of labor and sorrow, 10 years of labor and sorrow. This means that we have confirmation that in 2022, something happened. Why? Because the 10 years of labor and sorrow are for Israel. And yes, as you know from the protest, which is the biggest sign, that Israel has started officially the 10 years of labor and sorrow. Now, of course, everything is done through Hebrews 11.6, which is, without faith is impossible to please the Lord. So all of this, of course, is based on faith. But we're truly led to see this. It would be very difficult not to see this. Now, I'm not going to do a full teaching here on 2031, but you have now the knowledge and understanding that 2031 is the second coming. And this has been confirmed by many things, including 2 Peter 3, which leads us to 2023, which is the likely year of the rapture, plus eight, eight days later for Thomas, as we know here, eight days later for Thomas, 2023, 23 plus eight equals 31. This is one way in which we have confirmed 31 to be the second coming. And so once we know that 31 is the second coming, we know the wedding will be seven years and seven years from 31 will take us to 2024. Now, from the John 20, 16 and then 19, we know that Mary is the one that meets the Lord first and alone. Please go back to that teaching. This is just a short recap. And so we imagine that to be about 12 years or sorry, 12 hours earlier in the early morning, whereas the disciples meet the Lord at 4 p.m. about 12 hours later. Would that mean that there is about a year distance between Mary, who represents the bride, and the disciples, who represents the church? We don't know for sure, but we'll let to see this. This will def definitely prove or explain the eight years from 23 to 31, and the six years to the end of 24 to 31, showing that discrepancy that we see between Matthew and Mark on the transfiguration and Luke on the transfiguration, respectively, the six and the eight years. And what I mean by that is the six days and the eight days of the transfiguration. This leads us to see the very likely possibility of the rapture around 23 to 24. We spoke about that also in the previous calendar series. So we're going to focus in and please pay attention to this idea that we have also discrepancy between 32, let me try to zoom here, 32 and 31. I hope you can see it over there. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. Okay. 32 and 31, there's also a discrepancy or a gap or a span, just the same way that we have a gap or span between 23 and 24. So I'm going to have you focus on this because it's going to be truly important. And so lastly, we have 25 to 32, 32 being the last uh, year of the tribulation to being the great tribulation. And that's the 1260 days plus 1260 day totaling what? 2520 days. You can almost not not see it. 2520 days tells you that 2025 is the start of the tribulation. Lining these calendars up very very correctly so let's go then now to the next series which is going to be the matthew 24 series